Welcome back fellow readers, this is Suave and today we have some exciting news regarding the Eden Zero manga. Today we got a glimpse at five new characters that are going to be making their debut on chapter 130, releasing on February 16, 2021. So these characters were part of a drawing contest on Twitter and Hiro Mashima was able to get lots of submissions in from fans. The contest was to create your own original character with an Aether Gear ability and Mashima would weed through everything out and he would select the ones that he liked the most and the ones that he selected would be part of his manga. He would redraw those characters in his style and be part of the story in the Eden Zero manga. So on Friday morning the official Eden Zero Twitter account tweeted out a bunch of news. We got a new key visual to show off for Eden Zero for the anime. We got voice actors and we also got a glimpse at these five characters characters that are going to be making their debut in the manga. So today we're going to be focusing on those five characters. So I'm going to go in a certain order with these characters. We're going to start off with the characters who have the least amount of background information that we're given online and leading all the way up to the characters that have the most amount of information that we're given. So without further ado, let's begin. And I apologize in advance if I get any of these names or pronunciations wrong. I'm just going off of what I read online. So first we're going to start off with Nase. Nase has this evil, demented look in his eyes. <laughs> you don't want to stare at this guy too long because you know he's going to do something bad to you. All right, so here we have the art from the original submission by the artist on Twitter. They tell us that the Aether Gear's name is the Eye of Horus. And, you know, Anase has this crazy looking yellow Aether Gear lines going all through his body. It looks like he has the eye on his forehead as well. And we get a brief description about him. So he's supposed to be part of the government and his power is light based ether gear. He can hypnotize people and erase memories and even plant some fake memories into other people as well. And he's a bad guy that no one trusts but they're definitely scared of him and yeah I would be scared of him too if I saw some dude giving me those eyes and he started glowing yellow and uh, this, this guy's gonna be very creepy to deal with. <laughs> All right, the next one's going to be hard because my katakana isn't that great, but I think the name is Merani Lukla. If I'm wrong, correct me down in the comments. And this girl, she looks absolutely stunning in that outfit, and she looks like she's ready to toy around with whoever has to deal with her next. And so we're going to take a look at what the creator has in store for this character. All right, so here we have the original submission art for Merani Lukla. She's supposed to be at the age of 25, and she has the Aether Gear ability known as Mirror World. The mirror world is a space connected to all mirrors all over the world. She can come and go freely, but if the mirror breaks while you are moving through it, you will cease to exist. When she reappears from the mirror, her eyes will glow red so that she can see where she is and where she's going at any time. Only Mirani is capable of going inside the mirror world. Her ether pattern emerges from the back of the left hand all the way up to her elbow. And she also made a little side note that men are not very good at fighting against her, probably because of her stunning looks and you know her sense of fashion and just her cunning ability with the mirrors, of course. All right, so next we have Ijuna. And Ijuna is a very interesting character. I think Mashima's gonna have a whole lot of fun with this character. She has a very cool look to her. So let's go take a look at what her design originally does look like. So according to the Japanese description we have here, Ijuna is very quiet, cool, and beautiful woman who is often attracting the eyes of other women as well. She is an ally of love. She enjoys hearing other people confess their love to each other. And I guess that's like one of her side hobbies. Ijuna has the ability to sprout love by connecting red threads between targets. It doesn't matter if the people are enemies or even of the same sex. The thread of love will always work on its targets. If you cut the thread, however, the targets will immediately hate each other and become hostile. So I can only imagine the amount of fun that Mashima is going to have pairing up certain people and, you know, seeing uh, certain um, maybe pairs having a love interest and then also just fighting it out to the death whenever that thread is cut. So there's going to be a whole lot of fun when Ijuna has to encounter the cast of Eden Zero. And I like the overall design for Ijuna. She has glowing red eyes, short dark hair. She has a very calm, cool demeanor. She has a tight black leather outfit with these heels. She's definitely cool. She's definitely beautiful. I can't wait to see what she's got going on in the manga. All right, next is probably the baddest looking dude in this whole group and it is Callum Steelford. And you know, you get to see a little bit of design here, but really when you see the original art, you get to see just how badass this guy is. So let's go take a look. All right, so here we have the original art submission for Callum Steelford. He is at the age of 22. His ether gear is called Carburetor. His profession is Hitman 
and his personality includes being quiet, rigid, and hard to piss off. <laughs> he doesn't see any differences between humans and robots. He actually looks down on both of them. He doesn't like to rely on others. He only likes to rely on his own strength. Callum also likes to toy around with his opponents. His ability allows him to atomize anything he wants. He's excellent at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but can also use his abilities at a distance. He can suck out energy from raw materials such as fire, water, air, etc. And his physical strength will grow depending on how much energy he absorbs. And everything about this character, I just love the look of him. I mean, he has the spiky gray silvery hair. I love the color scheme going on with the dark teal, dark bluish color. He has the black. And everything about this character, I just love the design of. You have the spiky silverish grayish hair. You have the color scheme, which I'm a huge fan of. You have black, silver, and like a dark teal. And he has these, I, I didn't know what that symbol was in the top right. I thought maybe it was a logo, but now that I'm looking at it, it's actually his shoulder pads that he drew in. So you can see what the shoulder pads look like. So it's actually a metal shoulder pads and it has like these rings that go around, that strap around his body. So I thought that was pretty cool. He has his little tunic, he has bandages around his abs. He has these metal greaves that he's wearing as for his shoes. He has this small little black cape, the belt, there's just so much detail going on around this guy. And when he activates that ether gear, he just looks so menacing, so badass when you see all the lines coming up through his hand, all through his head. It's just going to look so badass in the manga. And I think if we ever get that far in the anime, which I'm sure we will, he's going to look even more badass in the anime for sure. And last but not least, we have Lila. Now, Lila is a character that I'm personally excited about because I love seeing people with abilities that have a little bit of luck uh, built into their abilities. So let's go take a quick look at what Lila is all about. All right, y'all, so here we have the original art submission for Lila. She is looking absolutely stunning in her little pink and white black outfit. We have her being at the age of 22. Her ether gear is called Gambler Rush. And here's why Lila is so stunning, because she is a popular beekeeper with a passion for gambling. Aside from when she's playing, she's a rather level-headed person. She has quite the passion for sweets as well. She can come across as snobby, but is actually a little introverted. Her ether gear is pretty interesting, it's lightning based. Uh, her attack power from her lightning attacks depends on her dice rolls, those little dice that she's always holding. Uh, the higher the number that she rolls, the stronger the attack is, as you can see in the little diagram. When she rolls a 2, it's like a little spark. When she rolls a 12, it's like a huge thunder god blast like you see from One Piece. However, this only applies if she were to roll an even number. If she were to roll an odd number, then it would have a negative impact on, on her when she's in combat. For example, if she were to roll a 2, she would maybe have a little short circuit and something would go haywire. If she were to roll something a little bad like an 11, it could be very damaging where the blast could potentially just explode in her face and she could be having a lot of self-inflicted damage. So there's a lot of luck that's being uh, relied on in her abilities. And one of the reasons why I love Lila's ability so much is because there's going to be some great tension going on when you read about this in the manga. So I can already imagine, you know, there's going to be some point in the battle, maybe she's going off against Rebecca because they're both key beekeepers, and there's going to be a point in the battle that where she is on her maybe her last breath, and she is going to roll those dice and hope that she gets something good. So you know there's going to be like a little panel where maybe at the very last panel of the page you get to see where she's throwing the dice, and you can't wait to see what that result it's going to be and then when you flip over the page I think that's where we're going to get some really exciting moments with Lila so hopefully I'm right about that I'm really excited to see what she's going to bring to the table all right so those are five new characters that are going to be debuting very soon in Eden Zero uh, personally I'm still on volume three I still need to catch up I promise that manga discussion video is going to be coming out very soon I'm trying to push that out as soon as I can and that concludes our video let me know down in the comment section what you think about these new characters and if you like this video make sure you hit that like and subscribe we're going to be bringing more Eden Zero content within the near future. With that being said, I will see you all next time. Bye everyone.